Hey friends! Today I'm going to show you this cool 3D sphere intersection example made by Constantin. So we're going to break this code pen into all of its parts. We're going to learn how to create these walls and this 3D sphere. So we're going to look at a bunch of cool techniques on how we can create these backgrounds, borders, and how we can use masks and then animate it at the end. I hope you're excited about this as I am, so let's get started. You can use regular HTML and CSS, but I'm going to use Svelte for the examples to make some parts easier like the templating. That being said, I'm going to show the equivalent HTML code. So the first thing we're going to do is in the markup, we're going to create this container with an item which has two surfaces, a top and a left div. The reason we have two identical surfaces is because they're going to serve as the back and the front for the wall, and then we're just going to space them out. And we're going to define some global variables in the root. Here we have some default colors, a border, and a glow, which we're going to apply later. In our CSS, we're going to create a container with a width of 40 women, an aspect ratio, and we're going to position it relatively. We're going to absolutely position the item itself and set the inset so it takes the entire width and height, and we're going to apply our glow filter. The surface is also going to be positioned absolutely with an inset so it takes the entire width and height, and we're going to assign it a background of black for now. Next, we're going to style the surface. Instead of using this background black, we're going to apply a linear gradient with the colors that we picked. We're going to say background repeat, no repeat, for the size is going to take the entire size, and for the background position, X and Y is going to start at the zero coordinates. Next, we're going to apply our black linear gradient, so we get this border. For the background size, we're going to say that it should be 100%, and then we just need to subtract the border. And we're also going to base the background position on the border. To get the 3D effect, we're going to apply a transform style of Preserve 3D on the container. Otherwise, all of our layers will be flattened. And we don't need to specify our perspective because we're looking at an orthographic view. So now that we're working in 3D space, we can transform the container by rotating it. Now we can target the second surface and we can translate it. Next we're going to style the top element. So we're going to specify a height of 6 women, we're going to position it absolutely, and we're going to repeat the same background trick by applying this linear gradient. Next we're going to add another background layer which is going to create this border. And then we're going to transform the top using skew and translate. And for the left side, we're going to specify a width of 4.5 women. We're going to position it absolutely with an inset of 0 pixels. So we're going to create the background again. And then we're going to add another layer to create this border. And then we can transform the left by using the skew and translate. Now we just need to repeat the items however many times that we want. And this is how it would look like using regular HTML. So we're also going to pass an index so we can space them evenly. But in this case, I'm going to use swell to make my life easier. So I'm going to loop over the item six times and I'm going to pass the index. As you can see, right now the items are stacked on top of each other. So let's fix that. Inside the item, we're going to add a gap of 10 women, and then we're going to specify a gap offset, which is based on the index that we passed, and we're going to pass it minus 3, so it starts from minus 3 to 3. And then we're going to transform it in 3D space by using translate Z. We're going to take the gap and multiply it by the gap offset. <laughs> And now we have our beautiful walls. The next thing we're going to do is figure out how to achieve this pulsating circles effect. And we don't want to hard code these values because we can have any amount of items that we want. So we actually have to figure out a mathematical way to achieve this using some basic trigonometry. And it might sound intimidating, but it's simpler than you might think. 
Let's look at an example to understand the math behind the pulsating circles. I'm going to create a container with 12 circles inside, and the circles are going to represent our walls. We're going to pass the index to each circle so we can do our calculations. Here I'm using some basic styles to create a circle. But the interesting part are the CSS variables that we declared. Here we have an angle at 0 degrees and we want to calculate the circle offset by taking the entire 360 degrees of the circle and dividing them by 24. And this is going to give us 15 degrees, so we can multiply this by the index. And then we also have a radius of 25 women, which we can use to calculate the diameter. And this is our x-axis, and we can also include the y-axis. We're going to base the diameter of our circles based on this angle. Let's specify the styles for the circles. We're just going to position them absolutely and give them an inset of 0 pixels. And we also have to specify the transform style to preserve 3D. And here I'm using a transform to space out the circles evenly on the z-axis. I'm going to declare an angle offset by using the index that we pass to the circle and we're going to multiply it by the circle offset, which is going to be 15 degrees. Now that we have the angle offset, we can calculate the circle diameter. And this is very simple using some basic trigonometry. So we can take the angle plus the angle offset to calculate the cosine. And then we're going to multiply it by the radius. And we can also use the index to create some colors. Now we can specify a background for each circle by using a radial gradient and saying that the circle should start from the middle and then we can pass in the circle diameter. So now we can use the angle, offset and the radius to calculate the circle diameter based on the angle. Let's see what happens when you go from 0 to 30 degrees. Let's do a full rotation. And this doesn't look that impressive until we enter the third dimension. Now that we understand some basic trigonometry, let's apply it to our example. On the root of our page, I'm going to specify the radius, the item offset, the circle Y position and the animation duration. We have to do the same thing as in the circle example and pass the index. So we're going to have an index for the back and the front wall. And we also have to apply a matching top index. You can do this however you want by passing it by hand or using CSS. But in this example, I'm going to take advantage of Swelt to make this completely dynamic. I'm going to specify this const index inside of this template to make the math a bit easier. Now we can specify the index for the back facing walls. And then we can calculate the index for the front facing walls. 
And with a bit of math, we can also get the index for the top wall. For the surface element, we're going to add another background layer, which is going to be a radial gradient. Now every circle has an equal diameter, which is not what we want. So for this reason, we're going to use some basic trigonometry. On the container, we're going to specify an angle at 0 degrees. And then when we have this surface where we calculated the angle offset, now we can calculate the diameter based on the angle. Now we can observe it moving through time and space. The only thing left to do is to use a mask to punch a hole through our background. And now we can also calculate the angle offset for the top And now that we have the angle offset and the diameter, we can use it inside our mask. So we can use some basic math to punch a hole through the top element. The last thing we have to do is to create the 3D sphere. So I'm going to create a ball container with a ball element inside of it. For the ball container, we're going to specify a grid and we're going to place the items in the center. We're also going to position it absolutely with an inset of 0 pixels so it takes the entire width and height. We also want to move the ball container back by applying a transform with Translate Z at minus 40 Vmin. And right now we don't see anything so let's apply some styles to the ball itself. Here we have some basic styles for the ball to create a flat circle. So we can specify a diameter and a radius and we can apply it together with a background. Next we're going to apply another background layer which is a black radial gradient which has some space for the border. And now we can transform the ball in 3D space using a transform so we can rotate the X and Y axis by 45 degrees and we can also translate Y by minus 20 women. For the circle animations, we need to animate the angle. By default, animating a CSS variable like this wouldn't work because the browser would interpret this as a normal string. That's why you have to use the add property value to specify the type of the CSS variable. Now the browser can interpolate this value over time. We're also going to animate the ball container. Since the animation duration is 4 seconds, here we're saying at 0% we're going to transform it to minus 40 Vmin, then at the 10% mark this is going to be opacity of 1. Then we're going to hold the opacity up to 50%. At 60% we're going to animate the ball container to its last position, which is 40 Vmin. And then from 50% to 60% we're animating the opacity to 0. At that point we're done, so we just specify the opacity to be 0 until the end of the animation. And you can play around with these values and they're going to be different based on your values. The last thing we have to do is use the animation. So for the container, we can specify the angle animation. We want it to be linear and go on forever. And we can do the same for the ball container using the ball container animations with the keyframes that we specified. The CodePen example also uses a mix blend mode, which we can create by overlaying this mix blend mode element by using position absolute, saying inset 0 pixels, then we can set the background and apply a mix blend mode of plus lighter and set the Z index. Absolute Cinema.